expect exoskeleton technology to be back soon in some form to finally hit the defense market. Sarkos Defense, a subsidiary company of Sarkos Robotics, could be ready to deliver the Guardian DX defense robot based on the Guardian Exo exoskeleton technology as early as Q3 next year. The company was awarded in October 2020 a contract by the Office of Naval Research to develop this teleoperated dexterous robot for the military. So we would expect to have the commercial versions of that machine available for both industrial and military customers in the third quarter of next year. Uh, so we have our first alpha units that are being tested now, uh, just like we did with our exoskeleton. So our process is create the first prototype, then create an alpha version, then a beta version, and then take the learnings from the prototype alpha and beta and build it into our commercial product, which gets released to our customers. So uh, towards the end of next year, you'll see the DX out in the marketplace. And in terms of which branches of the US armed forces the company thinks it will be used by, the list of users might go beyond the US Navy. Uh, certainly the Navy has interest for use in shipyards. I think ultimately we will see the Air Force uh, have interest as it relates to um, repair and maintenance associated with aircraft. Uh, it also has applicability in construction and maintenance activities relating to infrastructure. So the Army Corps of Engineers could be a potential customer for us. Guardian DX is a platform agnostic robot, which means it can attach to various chassis, including wheeled or tracked vehicles, to perform tasks in hazardous environments. And if two years from contract award to fieldings seems too short a timeline by defense procurement standards, it needs to be said that Guardian DX is not a completely novel platform, but leverages existing technologies of a pre-existent variant, the Guardian Exo. In 2019, Sarkos Defense won a contract award by the US Marine Corps to deliver a pre-production version of the Guardian Exo, a full-body, autonomously powered robotic exoskeleton. The following year, the company secured another contract for the use of its Guardian Exo exoskeleton alpha unit by the US Marine Corps, with delivery by the end of 2020. Started to do, we started to do some extensive testing with our uh, DOD customers. Uh, then COVID intervened, and unfortunately, a lot of the testing had to come to a stop because of our inability to be on base with our customers. Um, some of that testing has now resumed. Uh, so the short answer to your question is yes, the deliveries were made. Uh, and the primary focus of the deliveries at this point, since they are pre-production units, is for testing. Uh, and feedback from our government customers. So they have not been deployed in the field, uh, but they're going through rigorous testing. And in fact, we had um, uh, a number of representatives of the Marine Corps that were in our facility just a few months ago going through extensive testing with the machine. Sarko's investment in exoskeletons is set to continue and at fast pace. A recent release on the 6th of April announced Sarko's is merging with Rotor Acquisition Corporation. Under the new partnership, the merger is expected to provide $496 million to fund business plans, facilitate bolt-on acquisitions and enhance capabilities. But how much of this could go into defense? Yeah, a significant portion of that capital will be for the exoskeleton program. So our focus is on getting the products to our customers in commercial form, not in alpha form or beta form, but in the commercial form by the middle of next year. So a lot of the capital that we're raising will be used for that purpose. We certainly will look for opportunities in the defense sector. Um, we think that the defense sector is a very important part of our business going forward. Uh, and so although we're not committed to doing any particular types of acquisitions, um, we will certainly look at opportunities in that space. The use of these often referred to as Iron Man suits because of its futuristic looks goes back to the 1960s, with the US Army first significant effort dating back to 2011.
When DARPA launched its Warrior Web program, followed by the U.S. Special Operations Command Tactical Assault Light Operator Suit, or TALUS program, initiated in 2013. The goal was to equip the Army Next Generation Warfinders for military operations in urban terrain and unveil a fifth generation working prototype by 2018. After millions of dollars had been spent, Talos proved difficult to realize because of its complex subsystems interdependencies that made the technology unable to work as a whole. You know, I think it, it's um, the, the, the challenge is that the word exoskeleton refers to a very wide range of types of devices and machines. And so if you think about an exoskeleton being as broad a term as the term aircraft, um, you think about, you know, there are cargo aircraft, there are fighter jets, there are rotary and fixed wing, there are all different variations of aircraft. You know, if you take a look at what Talos was trying to accomplish, Talos was focused on frontline war fighters, making them more capable and safer. And uh, I, I think I would argue that at least where we stand today with exoskeletons, the use cases are more relevant for supply and logistics and repair and maintenance, the kinds of activities that we're focused on. Um, so, you know, don't think so much about Iron Man in the movie, but think more about um, uh, the power loader from the Aliens movie where, where, you know, Sigourney Weaver was actually using the machine for supply and logistics applications. And I think that's really um, the, the dichotomy that exists. Uh, we are more of um, a cargo aircraft than a fighter jet. And, and if you think about it in that context, for our applications, absolutely. I mean, these, are, this, these machines will be ready for prime time next year, and we think they will be widely deployed against both, uh, uh, throughout both military applications and commercial applications. Um, I think that the vision of an Iron Man-like suit uh, is still a ways off in the, in the future. Even though great strides have been made and some of these wearable robbers could start populating the market in the coming years, a lot of work remains to be done on the software side. Current exoskeletons that are being developed or used by army soldiers perform physical augmentation through AI and sensors. The data generated by AI is processed within the exoskeleton and remains within the system. Soldiers and commanders lack the ability to see and use the exoskeleton data to improve long-term performance, as there is currently no system that integrates these data sources or provides insight into more detail physical performance analysis for operations and training. For this reason, the US DOD is currently looking for an exoskeleton sensor data fusion and insight system under a current tender which will deliver a system able to interpolate soldiers' quantified performance data for real-time operational effectiveness.